Hey y'all, welcome back to Master HS, your one-stop shop for succeeding in high school. Today we're going to be covering if you should take AP Calculus BC or AP Calculus AB. Now I'm sure you guys have all seen the memes online, you know, all the BC, all the BC Calculus kids are like, oh, all these AB kids are so unintelligent. You see all these AB kids complaining about how the BC kids, all they do is study all day long. So I'm sure this is a very daunting decision for a lot of y'all to make. So I'm here to simplify it for you. So let's first describe what the actual difference is between AP Calculus AB and AP Calculus BC. Let's get into it. So basically AP Calculus and AB and AP Calculus BC cover pretty much the same content. AP Calculus AB goes at a slower pace because it only covers the first eight units of calc. It's typically considered the Calculus 1 class in terms of its college standpoint or college equivalent. Now, Calculus 2 is kind of the college equivalent of AP Calculus BC. Um, because it covers Calculus 1 and Calculus 2 concepts. So it's going to cover all those eight units from Calc AB. So even if you've already taken Calc AB and then you're going to BC, you're going to cover the same units, um, unless your school does it differently, but at least that's what College Board outlines. But it's going to add on two units, uh, Parametrics and Polars for Unit 9 and the Infinite Series for Unit 10. But these units are a little bit long, so even though it's only two units, it's, it's really like about three or four if you're thinking about it proportionally to each other. So essentially what that means day to day is typically how it looked at our school is that AB classes would typically cover a lesson per day, but BC would cover about two per day. Um, but if you do the math, that doesn't really make sense. And that's because BC ends up taking a little bit more tests because we cover more content. And so by the time you do that, there's just more days that BC needs to be sitting in the classroom learning more lessons. And occasionally AB did, I believe, two lessons, but just not as often as BC. And so BC is just faster paced and essentially covers more content. Okay, so the first thing I want you all to consider is what are you actually trying to get out of taking this class? I know a lot of people think, oh, let me just take BC because all my friends are taking BC and you know they just kind of rush themselves into it and you'll find that a lot of them drop out at the six week mark or at the semester mark or whatever your school uh, does as far as your dropping policy i know at my school i've seen about you know 20 25 percent of the class dropping out at a very very you know good high school too where a lot of people are pretty smart and very hard working um and so you want to mitigate that risk by actually understanding what you're trying to get out of it so what i like to say is if you guys are trying to major in stem you know you're trying to go into engineering or mathematics even or science or anything like that Taking BC, you know, is important, especially if you're trying to go to a top college. And there's a lot of math that's actually offered past BC that you can even take in high school, depending on your area. I know in, in our area, the DFW area, we offer a lot of other courses. We offer like discrete mathematics, linear algebra, we can take Calc 3 and differential equations as well. And so knowing that all those options are available, I was able to comfortably take BC as a sophomore and know that there's still math classes for me to take with junior and senior year. So that's something I want you guys to consider. If there are no other math classes available in your area, I would not take BC if you guys are a sophomore or junior or even a freshman or whatever it is. Because, you know, if you look online, one of the biggest indicators of success in college is if you took a math class your senior year. You don't want to forget about math your senior year and then come into college unprepared because you didn't take a math class. Now, let's say your school does offer, you know, your community or whatever you, wherever you live, does offer some classes after BC. Let's consider what you're actually trying to do in life. So if you guys are not majoring in STEM, I feel like you guys shouldn't be as big in as big of a rush um, to take BC. You know, if you're a senior, it's totally fine to take AB if you're going to major in something like history, etc. Because it's not as math heavy and it's not as important. So I want you guys to make these considerations. Now, after you guys have narrowed this down, I want you guys to take a look at your previous math course grades. I know this is gonna vary from school to school due to grade inflation and deflation and how hard your teacher was and all that. But generally what I like to say, if you had like a 97 or above, I think you can comfortably take BC. Maybe it's not comfortably, maybe you'll struggle a little bit, but I think it is doable if you put in the work. If and if and only if you put in the work to survive in BC. And obviously, I feel like if you've taken AB Calculus, you know, BC is obviously the next move to make. And I feel like, you know, if you're coming from some sort of accelerated program where you take, you've only taken like Algebra 2 for whatever reason, and it's some sort of integrated pre-calculus and calc class, I would try to take the calc AB version just because pre-calculus is so, so vital to succeeding in calculus. And I would not take that, that would not take the BC option without doing that. 
Now, if you're in kind of that 94 to 96 grade range, again, it's gonna vary by high school. I think that's where you kind of are deciding between A, B, and B, C. And I would just say it really depends on the next tip I'll give you guys. That's kind of about how much time you guys have. And I really feel like that if you guys are making below 94, you know, essentially you were barely able to make an A in pre-calc. So are you gonna be able to make an A in calc, which is generally speaking more hard. Um, but obviously it's gonna depend on your high school. I would say if your teacher has some sort of thing like I just said, where she's like, he recommends you take it. If you had a certain grade or above, then I would highly recommend you follow that because he's gonna know, you know, a little bit more specific to your school than I do. Now, the final thing I want you guys to consider is how much time do you guys have at school, especially if you're in that 94 to 96 pre-cal grade range, I really want you to consider what you're doing outside of school. A lot of you guys who are taking BC or even AB are juniors or seniors. You know, this is time for college apps, taking your SAT, your ACT, you know, it's your final push to get, go to a college, you know, building all your extracurriculars. You guys have family responsibilities now. You know, a lot of you guys are working jobs. It's a lot. And so I feel like if your responsibilities are going up from the previous year, and you're kind of in that 94, 96 range, I think it's time to consider, are you really gonna be able to handle it? Now, if you have less responsibilities in the next year than you had the previous year, would you have that 94 to 96? I think it's a, not a bad idea to try out BC, and then you can always drop to AB if that is offered. And so that's totally fine. All right, y'all, I appreciate y'all sticking around till the end of this video. I hope this video helped. Please comment down below any other video ideas you guys have or anything you want me to cover. Please hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one.